Are you a Canadian considering opening a U.S. LLC, but you don't know what the tax implications would be in Canada? Especially if you live in Canada, I would recommend you stay tuned to this video because I have two of my friends from Canada who are Canadian tax advisors, and we are going to discuss the implications of having a U.S. LLC while living in Canada. We just put out a video a couple weeks ago about investing in U.S. real estate as a Canadian, which I think is really great if you want to know about that. You can click the link below, above if my editing team puts it up there. Um, but to get right into it, I want to introduce you to Sal and Alex, uh, my friends up north. And uh, guys, tell, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Where are you calling from today? Yeah, so we're based in Toronto and uh, both of us are working along with our team as cross-border tax uh, advisors and filers. So we help folks, Canadians uh, who are looking to invest in the United States or who have invested and now... Uh, they, they have some income from there and we file their taxes. Uh, likewise, we help uh, Americans who are uh, based here in Toronto or Canada and they have some tax filing requirements over there. As Salman said that we are a cross-border accounting team and uh, we help Canadians um, investing in the U.S., especially real estate, e-commerce and day trading businesses and help them saving double from double taxation basically and uh, not paying taxes in both the tax authorities like saving the most from the taxes uh, i'm going to share my screen and we're going to get into it uh, i always tell my clients if you're going to be doing international business you should have a specialist in your country and a specialist in the country you're going to so you make sure you do it right getting in trouble with the government is the worst and you want to avoid that as much as possible and just focus on making as much money as you can with your business what happens when a canadian owns an llc i'll explain briefly on the U.S. portion of it, these are the different situations we're focusing on. We have e-commerce, people doing e-commerce or doing services, which could be a SaaS company, it could be programmers, or it could be or or like e-commerce, Amazon, Shopify, whatever you're doing. And then we also have investors in the U.S. stock market. Now, I'm going to briefly touch on the top section, what it means in the U.S., what happens in the U.S., and then I want to hear from you guys how to manage this in Canada. Doing e-commerce or services from Canada as a Canadian resident owning a U.S. single member LLC. Now, as long as this Canadian person has no U.S. trade or business, no office, no employees, no dependent agents, and no giant warehouse they own full of inventory, they're using a 3PL, there would generally be no U.S. income taxes in the United States. That's the same for option one. And option two, if a Canadian resident and a non-Canadian partner, as long as that non-Canadian partner is not an American, as long as that's another, like a, a guy from Mexico or a guy from Bulgaria, it doesn't matter. The rules would be the same. Still no U.S. income taxes. And then section three is the Canadian resident has a U.S. corporation. The U.S. corporation does pay U.S. income taxes. And there's other reporting stuff as well. So guys, please tell me, what does a Canadian person who has an LLC have to do every year? How do they avoid taxes? How should they manage this? So there's a couple of things that uh, a Canadian who's owning a U.S. single member LLC has to do. So that's very right what James said, that they do not have any obligations to pay tax in the United States. But since their mind and management are in Canada, they are required to pay and file a tax return for the LLC in Canada. Now, the United States considers the LLC as a pass-through entity, as a flow-through entity. However, in Canada, it's considered a corporation. So you would have to register the LLC with the CRA, get a business number, how like you would for a Canadian corporation, uh, obtain a business number, file a T2 or a corporation tax return. The profits of the LLC would be taxed as a Canadian corporate, as a foreign corporation acting like owned by a Canadian. In Ontario, that's about 12 or 13% based on um, for up until you have $500,000 as profit. Once you start to exceed that, you also have branch profits of 25%. But wait, I have a question. I want to interrupt you there. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, but from the U.S. from the U.S. perspective, all the work's done in Canada. For, but from the Canadian perspective, it's a U.S. business, right? So do you, you, are you reg actively registering LLCs to do business in Canada? Or do you guys do this all the time? We don't because we try, we, first of all, we recommend people not having an LLC at all. Uh, it's literally one of the the last things you want, you want to do, right? And if they still have, uh, we try to zero out the LLC as income, as management fee, and basically make it nil. Because that's what I've been recommending to clients. I say, if you want an LLC to get more clients in the US, you don't have to pay taxes, so there's no double tax issue. Uh, the conservative way is to send all the money, all the profit at the end of the year to your Canadian company as a management fee. Yep. So what... 
how does how does Canada know about these LLCs and how would they how do how, uh, is there any case law or any examples of Canada Canada going after LLCs that don't that have Canadian owners? Yeah, so they don't they don't find out, right? They don't find out uh, unless you kind of report it, right? As of case laws, we have not seen any. Uh, Alex, you haven't seen any, right? No. And yeah, I'm I'm going to let you jump in. You're the expert in these things. Like maybe they can they can cart you from the money which you're getting in the Canadian business or or personal bank accounts. They can ask you from where that money is coming from, and if you're not doing proper tax reporting, so they can cart you. Uh, you know, that can trigger you some uh, legal consequences in Canada. Yeah, I've I've never heard of a Canadian person registering an LLC to do uh, to pay taxes in Canada. I think uh, what's a way we could avoid that because that's that's generally something that I deal with a lot of uh, Portuguese, for example, and they use LLCs to not pay the uh, to 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 basically not pay taxes in Portugal. And what they do is they get management outside of Portugal, so they have operating agreements showing that the companies are managed outside of Portugal, and uh, these agreements uh, then they bring the money back as a dividend. So what if what if this Canadian resident could you ha- say you have a manager in the U.S. who is who's managing and running the company, even though you're the technically the owner? So basically, what we do we open a Canadian corporation and we charge a management fee from the Canadian corporation to an LLC and always nil out the profits of the LLC and that income we report in the Canadian corporate income tax return. After paying the corporate taxes, we issue dividends to the owner if they want. This is the simple process which we follow, but we don't encourage Canadians to open an LLC in the U.S. Like if a client, a new client comes to us and he wants to open an LLC in the U.S., we'll simply say no and we'll provide him with other options like an LLP or a C-Corp or an LP. But why the C-Corp then has, I mean, you have so much more flexibility with the LLC because you don't have to deal with transfer pricing in the U.S. You don't have to deal with taxes in the U.S. In the U.S., yes, but not for the Canadian side. Like lots of flexi- flexibility if you have an LLC in the U.S. as a U.S. person or a U.S. resident, but not as a Canadian person. What, what would you gauge the risk of running an LLC and then sending all the profit back to Canada at the end of the year? I don't see any risk in this just because management fee and transfer pricing things are very lenient in Canada. Well, there wouldn't be transfer pricing issues because you're sending all the profit back to Canada. So they would yes. only <laughs> they couldn't. They couldn't do any more. So the reason that I'm talking to clients who want LLCs is just to have a U.S. company get easier to pay from U.S. clients. Sometimes there's uh, transfer, uh, not transfer. There's currency exchange issues where they can save some money and uh, maybe better to access, uh, better access to financial tools, or potentially they have foreign partners. So I talked to someone today who had a partner who was in Panama, and they're going to attribute most of the profits to the partner in Panama and send the money there instead. So they can kind of determine where the money's going either way. A Canadian can have an LLC if they send all the profits back with pretty low risk in Canada and pretty low exposure. There is a T a form that they have to file if you have a, a an LLC in the U.S. Right? Was it T one one four three four three four? Yep. T one one three four, and that's just um, disclosing. It's equivalent to five four seven one. You can say. Okay, so it's sharing. You have a foreign corp, but there's no tax calculation. It's all no tax information. Calculation. Yes. Okay. Does that show like a profit and loss on it? A state like a profit and loss statement? Um. Yes. It does. For, for the past publications, you have to show proper profit and loss. But the recent publications after 2020, you don't have to show the profit and loss. Oh, nice. So you don't have to show your profit and loss. Like if, if it's not ready yet, that it's okay to still file the form without uh, without attaching Like on one, on one part, they'll ask you a question like, are your uh, books up to date? Like uh, notice to read it. Like are, are your books up to date? So you can simply say no if those books are not up to date and there is no problem with that. And you don't have to mention the profit and loss. That's awesome. Uh, so what's the requirement, the ownership requirement for filing this? If, if a Canadian person owns 25% of a, of a four, of an LLC, is that what's the limit? More than 10%. Is more than ten percent. So if you own more than ten percent, you have to disclose ownership of this foreign company. Okay. Yeah. What's the potential risk or exposure if someone? Because I talked to someone the other day who was like, "I want an LLC. I'm never bringing the the money back to Canada. I'm leaving it in the U.S. I don't want to pay any taxes in Canada or in the U.S. That's what I'm doing." I said, "Okay, bro. That's what I told him. Um, I told you probably should talk to uh, these guys over here." But what what what's the uh, the risk there for this guy? If he, what's the potential exposure here? Canada would t- try and tax the LLC, I guess, right? Yes, uh, the potential exposure. I see recently I dealt with a case uh, where 
Canada ask information from Coinbase to all of the Canadian investors with or without having an LLC and they check that if they are reporting that LLC in Canada or not and they are penalized. My client was penalized $12,000 of fine from the from the CRA. For not reporting the LLC? Yes, for not reporting. He was having an investment in Coinbase US uh, through an LLC and he was not reporting it under T1134 to CRA. Was it a single member LLC or a multi-member LLC? It was a single member LLC. So it's interesting, if you were to use a multi-member LLC, I believe Coinbase wouldn't have the same, they might not have shared ownership the same way um, based on how they had it in the U.S. system because that would be showing up as a U.S. person, potentially not a Canadian person because when a single member LLC signs up for Coinbase, they're doing a WABEN. So is, is it, right. I mean, it might might potentially be better to have a multi-member LLC if you're doing this, but that's what that's that's where i told you whenever client comes to us we'll never encourage him to have an llc in the us like we have other options and we always suggest those other options how does the lp work you open us lps for clients with multiple owners yes we do so they then they pick up that uh, that income personally in canada and they can leave it in the us but they pay tax personally in canada yes they do or or take it uh into the corporation Yes, they can also take it into the corporation. Um, you can um, do an operating agreement, like you can amend the articles and make an operating agreement that instead of that individual, this Canadian corporation is the owner, is the partner in that LP, so that the K-1s issue to the Canadian corporation and they can report the K-1s in Canada under the corporation. Very good. So I'm still thinking about this. This is still interesting to me. Because most of the clients I talk to, and uh, here's some of the reasons why I think Canadian, I mean, I made a bunch of videos about it recently, but here's a bunch of reasons why I do recommend the LLCs for Canadians. Because the, what, what happens is the Canadians that I talk to, most of them have plans to leave Canada within the next two years. So once you leave Canada, um, then you can keep using the LLC and keep paying no taxes. So it's, it gives you a, a good springboard for that, which uh, I think is really useful. And um, I, I think a lot of people like the idea of having the, the company treated as a corp. You know, it's, it's like a hybrid entity, really, because it's treated as a corp from Canada and a, an LLC from the U.S. And there is some potential argument. I'd love to see a good court case where someone says, no, it's managed in the U.S. It's managed by people outside of, especially like, what if you have like a, a, a setup where it's 50-50 and most of the business is run by a guy who lives in uh, Uruguay, like Uruguay, and... Uh, and he's like managing, running the whole business. It's an active business. And then it's basically like a stock investment for the Canadian owner, even though he owns 50%. Would that still be uh, a bad situation? Like, because because that's not doing business in Canada. It's being run by someone out abroad. That's like part two, Canadian resident, non-Canadian partner. Like, how does that, how does that work? So the liability of a Canadian resident is to report his worldwide income in the Canadian tax return. He can't run away from that. So any income he's generating from this LLC, like the K-1, he needs to report in the in the Canadian personal income tax return. He, he can't run away from reporting that income in his Canadian tax return. But it's treated as a corporation. So it's not until he takes the money, it wouldn't be taxable yes. in Canada. Yes, right. Until he's he will not take the money from the corporation, it's not taxable in Canada. Okay, so potentially if you have foreign partners, you can leave the money in the company, reinvest it. Uh, and then wait until you leave Canada and break residency to take the money. I know there's potentially estate tax implications as well, right? When, when you talk about like if what, how would that work if someone has an LLC with appreciated assets and then they break their residency and they and they say I'm not Canadian anymore, I move into um, Slovakia. Now, um, now what happens with that appreciated LLC? Now you have a million dollars in the bank, you own half the LLC. What? How does that? How does that work for estate taxes? Because it's technically stock. Yeah, you mean you're talking about departure taxes? Yeah, departure taxes for for like a Canadian who has an LLC that they've been operating with that has appreciated untaxed income in it or whatever has a has a a value to it. Yeah, so then on the day of departure they would uh, report the value of that LLC and the capital gains on that would be taxed. And you could defer that tax until the day you actually sell sell that stake in the company. But the eligibility criteria for this is you should have that LLC at least for the five years during your 10 years of residency with Canada. So if it's less than that, it's not subject to the tax? No, it's not subject to the departure tax. Ooh, you hear that, guys? When you open an LLC, 
you have five years to leave Canada before until you have to pay tax on the on the profits. The L, you're making you guys saying you're not recommending the LLC, but you're making it sound better and better well, in our conversation. We're talking we're talking about a multi member LLC where you've got a guy out somewhere, whatever uh, at the end of the world that's doing the management. What so if it's are, another guy in Canada? I guess it doesn't work the same way, right? Well, then he then yeah. <laughs> then you have because the risk mine and management are again in Canada, right? Then you then you then you have the risk of um, Canada saying this LLC is doing business in Canada. That's ultimately that's always like the risk from the U.S. as well too. When you have well, like in all these different jurisdictions, so that's why you have local companies because you don't want to have the foreign company be doing business in the local jurisdiction. But with with everything being online and remote and digital, it's harder and harder for the governments to be on top of this stuff. It's really interesting. Yep, 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 yep. Really interesting stuff. Um, you still recommend not opening an LLC. I don't know why though, because you're making it sound better. You're making it sound better every time. It's it sounds like there's a lot of gray area, a lot of flexibility for the aggressive person, and even for the non-aggressive person, you have more control over when you take the distributions based on how you structure the ownership. It has like so much more flexibility now. But you're still having to report that as a Canadian business and do a Canadian corporation tax return for that LLC. No one's, but you just said no one does that. You guys don't do that for anybody. Agreed. 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 But it's it's again you're going into risky areas. You're, you're... like we can we can um, give this as an unofficial advice to our clients, but we can't say like uh, it's an official advice. Of, of course, I mean you guys are saying you, what I'm hearing is that if a, if a Canadian LLC has one owner and the owner is doing a service business like doing online consultations and lives in Canada, technically that LLC is doing business in Canada, and technically that LLC should pay tax in Canada. I get it. I'm saying that if if that's your situation and you want to use an LLC, it's not a problem. All you have to do is pull all the profits out of the LLC and send it to your Canadian court. So you can sell if you want to. If you don't like, if you don't trust Canadian banks because they lock your they lock people's money up, or if you, uh, I'm not I'm not anti Canada guys. I'm just I'm just re- I'm just reflecting the sentiments of the people I talk to every day. Um, but if you if you wanted to use U.S. bank accounts or other country bank accounts. That's how you can use the LLC without being too much at risk because you then you don't have then you're operating a company in Canada but there's no income so the the exposure is very minimal there. Allow me to elaborate. The exposure in terms of taxes to pay is minimal. You're still required to file a tax return even if you pull all the profits out because you still have revenue and expenses there, right? So you're still required to file a Canadian C- co- corporate tax return. What are the what are the the penalties for not filing a tax return that's, that has no income on it? Oh, we've always been filing it. So I'll be honest. No, I mean you. like if you if if an LLC like if an LLC was doing business in Canada but had no profits, what would be the penalties for not filing that return in Canada? Because in the U.S. they calculate the penalties on how much taxes are due. Yes, in Canada it's the same way: five percent of the unpaid tax that is due on the filing deadline plus one percent of this unpaid tax for each complete month that the return is late up to a maximum of 12 months. Great. So there's no penalties for not filing if there's no income. So you can take the income out uh, of the LLC and then you don't have to then you don't have to necessarily pay tax on Canada. But 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 uh, if you have an LLC and you are not filing the 1134 there is a penalty of 2500 per year. Yes, the 1134 is important. The $2500 penalty. Why did that guy you said he had to pay 12,000? Why was it so much higher? Uh, that is for multiple years. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So the 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 one one three four. You don't even have to send financial statements. You just say you have an LLC. Very interesting. Very. <laughs> that's really funny to me. The CRA is super like on top if of. If you stuff. don't have them ready. Yeah, but you know they're never perfect. My I'm still doing my accounting from 2022. I'm just, I'm just kidding. They're always listening. They're always listening. I'm just kidding. So I want to talk about investing because I did put out videos in the past that may or may not be correct because I, I always I always um, tell people I don't know Canadian taxes that well. I have Canadian day traders that want to do LLCs and do day trading. The same rules would apply, right? So if a Canadian person is a, a day trader, technically that company is doing business in Canada. But let's say let's say they they have a way around that and it's not and and they or they take all the profits out. Like how would that be calculated? Someone. Day trades every day. They they put a hundred thousand in the account. They day trade every day. At the end of the year, there's three hundred thousand in the account. So, would you guys say there's two hundred thousand of profit that they should take out of the company? Yes. And they would send that to their Canadian company as like uh, advisory fees, I suppose. Yes. And that and then they pay tax on it. Yes. Is that yes. less than they would pay day trading in Canada? 
what would the taxes be if someone made two hundred thousand dollars day trading in Canada? That will be taxed on the marginal tax in his personal. Uh, you're talking about personal or corporate? I'm just trying to say if there's an advantage from a tax perspective of day trading in a U.S. LLC and sending it all back as one lump sum advisory fee profit at the end of the year, or uh, by day trading in a Canadian company. Uh, day trading is considered your active income. So it's the it's treated the same way as you're sending profits to Canada as an advisory fee or a management fee. So it's the same. It's the same. Same thing. Same thing. Yes. But if you're taking this money under your personal name, then it will be taxed on a high tax bracket. And for 200000 US dollar, the tax bracket, I believe, is more than 50%. Yeah, 53%. So now let's talk about long-term investing. So a Canadian opens a Schwab account and they put in uh, $500,000 and they just leave it there. Um, and it just, they, their basis is 500,000 of stock. Now, I mean, I guess in Canada, it wouldn't be taxable until they take the gain, right? Yes, right. But the long-term capital gain, what's the long-term capital gain in Canada for if they do in one sale? In Canada, capital gains are, were just, capital gains were included in your income at 50%. Now they're included at 67% and then taxed on your margin tax bracket. However, but the tax rate. The tax rate on those those capital gains which are included in your income, if you're doing through a corporation, it's more than 50%, like 50%, you can say. And if you're doing under personal, then it's based on your marginal tax bracket. Yeah. Okay, so it's probably still better for long-term investing to do it in a, in Canada locally. Yes, in a, and in a corporation. In, and in a corporation investing. And that's where generally people are going to do it because their money's stuck there anyways because they don't want to pay tax on it. So they leave it on their corporations, right? Yes, right. So what we do in in such circumstances, what we do, we create two corporations in Canada. One is the holding corporation, other is the operating corporation. The holding corporation holds all the investments and, and making passive income aggressively. And whatever the passive income they generate, we charge a management fee through an operating corporation and pull out all the profits of the holding corporation into an operating company where all the profits will tax on 12 to 13 percent rather than being taxed on 50 percent under the holding corporation so just okay. just to add to there there is passive income rules uh that go that kick in and that's a whole different topic and those are much higher uh th those are at actually 50 percent even under corporation so that's what alex is talking about it's it's a it's a different kind of worms you don't want to get into it right now in the vein of in the in the concept of reducing or lowering estate taxes or exit taxes, I mean, exit taxes for someone who's planning to leave Canada. Is there a way to, because uh, you said that if someone has an LLC potentially not subject to the the Canadian exit taxes, is there a way to use a, a US LLC to bill a Canadian company to reduce your income and reduce your asset value in, in Canada to reduce your overall exit tax? So if, if um, so basically on CCPCs, Canadian Controlled Private Corporation, you have to evaluate that company, okay, and calculate the per share gain. And there is a lifetime exemption which you can apply in Canada, and that lifetime exemption is one million sixty, yeah, one point two million. So if your gain is less than one point two, so you're safe. You don't have to pay any taxes. You can apply this lifetime capital gain tax exemption. If your gain is more than this, only then you can think of incorporating an LLC in the U.S. and charging some some management fee through the LLC to, to this CCPC. That's awesome. You know, it's funny. That's actually double the uh, the exit tax in the U.S., the exit tax exemption. The exit tax exemption is 600000 in the U.S. So if you're leaving the U.S., you only get 600000 of uh, capital gain exemption from your exit tax. It applies to if, you go, if, you're, if you've got your own corporation. Oh, privately held company. Yeah, exactly. Right, so oh, it, it doesn't, doesn't apply, apply to, to like, like stocks. Does it? Does, does that include a holding company that holds that holds uh, investments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's still pretty good. I mean, that's where everyone has their money, anyways. Uh, all the entrepreneurs have their money like that, anyways. So potentially, the day trading in the stock market can work if it's being managed by a non-resident, a non-Canadian non-resident partner. That money can kind of be in reinvested, 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 reinvested without being pulled back to. Um, to Canada without as much risk. So that's one way that they can potentially, we have the documents that say the manager is um, Bobby from Romania. He's managing it. He's doing the trades and it's just half owned by someone in Canada and that's just increasing, increasing value, but they're day trading. There'd be no tax on that until the money's brought back to Canada, right? Yes, right. There we go. I'm going to make a separate video just about that. My day traders hate paying taxes. 
And uh, that's a pretty sweet idea. Do you have any parting words? Yeah, we, uh, we would just say that uh, do your own due diligence. Uh, do speak to a tax expert. And uh, this is not financial advice in any way, shape, or form. Uh, relate, uh, it, it does differ by scenario to scenario. Alex, Sal, thanks for being here. Guys, the whole, what I want you to take away from this video, all my viewers, is that when you work with the good accountants, they're going to give you the right advice. They're going to give you the rules and they're, we, we don't want to get in trouble. We want to give you what the rules are, but we also want to make it work for you and maybe explain things in a certain way. Like I always say things like, well, if it's done like this, then this would potentially happen. I try and make you make your own decisions and get, guide you there and help you and help you understand the risk and expose everything. I think using a, a US LLC is not as big. Of, I wouldn't I tell people it's not a bad idea. But listen, you got to gauge your risk in Canada. You have to work with good advisors. You have to file your T1134. And if you want to be really above board with it and you have no other partners, you should probably send all the money back to your Canadian corp at the end of the year. I have been saying this, so I feel good about that. And if you need good Canadian advisors who can look at your case, you can contact uh, Alex and Sal. And if you want someone to help you with the U.S. portion, the LLCs, and finding the, the best way to uh, lower that worldwide tax, you can contact me to schedule a free call at jamesbakercpa.com. I'll have their contact in the description. Thanks for being here. I'll see you in the next video.